what's up snipers and welcome back to our minnesota wilds geo mode so in the last episode we finished the regular season and we actually had the 25th or we finished in 25th in the entire league however we managed with the draft lottery to jump up all the way to the third overall pick again this year so we're definitely getting a good stud to play in like the same line maybe as bear schultz or, or whatever so we're gonna see how this draft pans out I'm not exactly sure who's supposed to go in what spot, but hopefully we can get somebody good for the future because we might be a good team come next season already. If not, then maybe another couple seasons of rebuilding, but this should be almost done the rebuild. So let's start up the 2024 NHL injury draft and see what we could snag up here. So Chicago's got the first. I think last year they had the second, so they're still in the rebuild Calgary's got the second, and so on like that. I'll just go through all the teams right now so you guys can see who's got what. Also, I put Grayland and Dumba on the trading block to see if we could get any offers for them because they have one more year after this year. Or, well, they have one year left on their deals pretty much. So a team that wants to go for the cup, those are perfect players to bring in. So we'll see if we get any offers here. Um, but here again is the draft class. Hopefully we could snag up a medium elite. So as you can see, there's this one exact elite. This guy I think is probably going to go first. But you never know. There could be this guy who is a center sniper, Vince Lewis from the Vancouver Giants. Um, and then there's also this guy. Um, I kind of want this this high top six guy. But I don't know if he's going to be an elite player is the problem. Like he might be a medium top six. So I might go with this center guy even though we already have Bear Schultz. Um, there's also this guy who's supposed to go in the top 10, but I don't want to go after somebody that's in the top 10. I want somebody that's in the top five. There's also this offensive defenseman, which wouldn't be that bad, but we have a lot of defensive players. So let's just see what happens here and who goes in what spot. So, okay. The Chicago Blackhawks already make up their decision and they choose the center sniper, Lewis, who is an 82 center sniper, so nice pick of him to help out with the rebuild. Okay, so now we go on to the Calgary Flames. I will skip this pick. And they get the defenseman, who is a medium elite, 79 overall. So we might have somebody that might not be necessarily NHL ready, but hopefully somebody that could help us out here. So let's see. Barrel is the exact elite center. I kind of want to go with him now. Just because then we could have maybe... I don't know how his face-offs are, though. He's an exact elite. But then there's also this one guy who would help us out a lot. But I think he's only a medium top 6'4", but he's got some pretty good statistics. Uh, I think I want to go to the sniper, to be honest. But I might be regretting it afterwards if he's only a medium top 6. Because it's his high top 6, so maybe he's not. Maybe he's a medium elite. You know, I'm going to bite the bullet in here and try and go in with the right winger. I know this guy's an exact elite, but we do have Verdi Bear Schultz. This suits our needs better, so welcome aboard Eric Fitzgerald from the Swift Current Broncos. Please be a medium elite here, and he is. Okay, good. 75 overall, so he actually might be listed as a fourth line forward or a depth forward. We might not be able to play him this year. Um, but we'll see how he is for next season. But that is good that he's a medium elite at least. But there's probably better elites. Like the other two guys might be a, a higher overall than the 75. But I think this one suits us a lot better because we already have our top center prospect. I think a right winger medium elite will help us out a lot better. Vegas goes with Bearable who's a 68. So he made the right choice there. Because this medium elite is better than that medium elite. So... Not a bad choice overall wise. And Sawatsky, wow, fifth overall. And he's an 80 overall. So that would have been the one to go with his Sawatsky to center playmaker. He could have even won second overall. But oh well, I don't mind. I, I think I did good with the uh, Fitzgerald guy. Let's see who goes after this for the rest of this first round. Just for the Google Sheets page. So Patrick goes to the Sharks, 66 overall. Yeah, this draft doesn't look as deep as the last one. Last one was really deep. Medium Elite Bear is a 64 overall. Okay, not bad for the Florida Panthers at 9th. Frisian goes to the Rangers. 
oh, the Islanders must have dropped off in the standings and didn't make the playoffs. They get a top four defenseman in Smolinski as they continue their long rebuilding process. Kalamar goes to the Devils. Dundas goes to Arizona. Anybody good here? I won't read off all the names. Anybody, though, that jumps out like any medium elites. But if you guys want to check out who gets drafted in the first round, always check my Google Sheets page because that's where I put all the draft picks from the first round in and all that other cool information. Yeah, now we're getting into the weaker kind of guys. Oh, there's a medium elite, though. Center Sniper, too. S. Rodney to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So they lost Crosby to retirement, and they pick up a new top center of the future. So nice to see that for them. Eventually, they'll probably get back to the cup finals again. Nystrom goes to Buffalo. Any other late round steals for any of these teams? Subban goes to Montreal. Interesting. Um, Stillman, Toronto. Crooks. And there's still top four defensemen going. Samuel Warren for a second. No, thank you. I don't want to give up picks here. I should try and see if I can trade away Grandland or something. Maybe I'll do it at, at the... <clears throat> in the off season or something. So who was the last player to go in that first round? Just so I know from my sheets page. Okay, M enough. Okay, so now as you can see, we have the seventh pick in this draft. So we basically moved up four spots in the uh, yeah four spots up in the uh, draft lottery. <coughs> Sorry about that. My throat is really, really uh, dry when I talk a lot. I have a water ball near me, but it doesn't help always. So, um, Okay, so now let's him to our pick and see what we can get with our second round pick here at the seventh spot. Hopefully we can get somebody good as well here. High top nine sniper, another right winger. This guy might be only a medium top nine though, but another sniper. It might not be that bad to bring in some more wingers because... Especially right wingers because they don't have a lot of them, I believe. So we'll go with him, and he is a top nine forward. So not the greatest choice there. I think a medium elite went right before him too. Now we're gonna try and see if we could snag up at least a goaltending prospect for the miners. If there is one that a goalie that goes, yeah, there is one here. So we'll go with this guy, Manny McQuaid. Okay, Manny McQuaid, welcome aboard. Medium starter, there you go. At least we got somebody that's got potential now for our AHL club. Hopefully he ends up panning out. Fourth round pick. Don't want to take this too long. Um, Kessel, unknown, another goaltender. 17. You know what, let's bring in another goaltender. Fringe starter, okay. We just need as much kind of like depth as we can. We have a lot of young prospects already, so... We already have a lot of defensemen, maybe some other wingers. Lane, top six forward, sniper. Ah, he's got solid statistics. Jimmy Lane. You know what, let's give this guy a chance. Maybe he's a low elite. And he's a bottom six forward, like all the snipers seem to be that go in the fifth round. No, I do not want Travis Sanheim. I'm trying to go through a rebuild here. I'm not trying to just pick up old veterans. <clears throat> Sorry, old veterans is what I was saying. Just in case when I edit my audio, it doesn't go out. Or it goes out for some reason. Um, Sixth round here. Hunt. Roy. Two-way defender. You know, let's go with another defenseman, sure. Seventh D, okay. That guy might be a depth guy for us eventually. And seventh round pick here. Our final pick of the draft. Uh, unknown, unknown center, Valerie Kolosov. Um, hmm, exact backup, that's not bad either. Let's just start by potential for a second. Because I have not, oh, exact talk six forward, okay, and he's supposed to go undrafted too. Okay, Eric Golgoski. Welcome aboard, he's probably low top six though. Yeah, low top six, but still he could be an NHL player. We have some low top sixes in Iowa, but they don't always grow that much, but they have good trade value, I believe. So he could be potentially trade bait. So there's a look at our picks again. Eric Fitzgerald being the best of them. I'm hoping he is a really good sniper and helps out Bear Schultz a lot because Bear Schultz, I think, is a 
he's a two-way four, but he could be probably a playmaker almost. So let's send him to the re-sign stage and see who we have to sign for the AHL club. I am going to give Fitzgerald definitely a contract just in case he's ready for the NHL. Like he could be a fourth liner or a depth forward. So let's see, who do we have to re-sign this year? I think we have to give Kaprizov a contract and in some of our youngsters. We have 48 mil cap space at least. Let's see, UFAs. So yeah, Kaprizov, I want to get back and he wants an extension. That's good. Erickson Eck does not want an extension. I might not be able to get back Joel Erickson Eck, who's the last remaining player probably uh, pretty much of the Minnesota Wild team that was here in year number one. Um, Lekkanen... And it's not too bad for UFAs. And then Bull, I'm going to give a contract to for the AHL. Get a lot of these unsigned um, guys for the AHL because, yeah, the AHL team needs prospects and especially defensemen. Goaltending Soderstrom, who we signed last year, might get him back again if he wants to. Yeah, he might want to come back, so that's good. RFAs, Hodges needs a contract. Lundestrom, I'm hoping I could get back as well. Um, hopefully these teams don't want to go to a winning team. And yeah, that's it. So it's not that much of players to resign, but we will try. And Fitzgerald, where did we even draft him from? The WHL, I think. He's got actually good statistics all around already, but he's listed as a minor scoring forward. So if he's not able to play in the NHL next season, we might have to send him back to the CHL for one year before he's ready to play. So... Hopefully he grows though during the offseason. That'd be nice. So anyways, guys, I'm going to resign everybody that I can. And I'll see you guys back up here in a second. Okay, guys. So I couldn't get back a lot of players um, that because of how we played last season. And how it's hard to explain how basically some of them just, I think, wanted to basically test free agency, um, including Joel Erickson. He didn't want to come back. So we are going to let him go. We have $38 million, though, in cap space, space, so we could make some big noise in free agency, which is nice. And then also, we have, let's see, yeah, we could still, like, um, we could, what is I going to say? I, even, I don't even know what I was going to say, but anyways, yeah, so, and Soderstrom's going to go, so we're going to have to find a new backup. We also release people like McCoshin and Murphy and stuff like that because youngsters that are going to jump into the NHL probably next season. Um, one thing I just realized is on the bottom how it says the retained salary and that we still retaining two salaries. So I think still Zach Parise's contract and uh, Ryan Suter's contracts are both still affecting us, which is pretty crazy considering how far we are past those guys like stages with us. Um, we're still paying two point three five in mil, uh, two point three five million dollars, which is a lot, but oh well, it's not that bad. So, anyways, let's quickly before we sim to the free agency scene, let's see what we have and what we might need for next season. So, center wise, um, I'd like to try and still trade away Granlin during this off season or at the trade deadline next year. I might actually just trade him at the deadline next year, but Luke Coonan, So, center wise, we are good. Yeah, center-wise, we're definitely good. We don't need a center in free agency. Left-winger-wise, we might need some more wingers, it looks like. Yeah, we're going to need some wingers for sure. Uh, we could always play Fitzgerald in the NHL this year, but you never know. Um, but yeah, we're going to need some wingers. Defensively, three, four, potentially five here. Yeah, we might need another couple defensemen, like maybe one or two more. But I think that's pretty much all we need. So some wingers and some defensemen and a new backup goaltender. So let's sim to free agency, see what's available. Hopefully there's some decent stuff out there. Of course, people losing morale because of certain players going. Nobody lost morale, though, because of Erickson Eck, which is really surprising, considering he's been with the team that long. So, let's see, get our backup goaltender first with all the cap space we have. Um, Soderstrom's still there. <laughs> um, Connor Ingram, no, he's not that good. You know what, UC Saros was with us before as well, but he is 29. Okay, it's not bad. You know what, let's try and bring back Saros again. Saros was with us, I think, a couple years ago. So, we'll give him one year at 2.2. .2. The players are back up this year. 
And then let's see, we needed a couple more defensemen. Uh, Sarah Yevi, this guy was not that bad. Detroit Ruins pick. I'd like it one at least top six or top four defenseman. Ryan McDonough, but he's old. Madison Bowie, he's way overpaid. Um, oh yeah, wait. Did I just say Carolina won the cup? That's crazy because I think, yeah, it was last year in the uh, draft that we traded away Madison Bowie to Carolina. So that trade must have helped them out a lot. I don't know how Bowie played last year. Let's actually quickly check that for something else. Because he just won a Stanley Cup with them. He had 12 points and he actually scored a, a three goals, which is way more than he put up with us. And yep, he went to the Stanley Cup Finals, only put up two points, but still he won a Stanley Cup. Um, So let's get one top six. Let's see if we can get Sarajevi here. I don't want to give him a three-year deal. Let's give you two years at just a bit more than you want. I don't know if any other team's going to want you. Um, and then let's get one depth defenseman. I just don't know who. Uh, Ryan Merkley. Wow, he's an RFA and he's he hasn't grown that much. Huh, okay, so Nicholas Malosh. Um, depth defenseman. Nobody listed as a depth defender yet. Come on, there's got to be a depth defenseman. There you go. Exact 70, 70. You know what? Let's get Andrew Nielsen back. I could have given him a contract. Hopefully he comes back and plays with us again. And then we need a couple wingers at least. Um, Gold Dobin. Anybody just want a one-year deal? Ma Michael McCarron does. There's not that much available on the right side. We'll give you one year. Yeah, we'll give you a one-year deal. I have four million dollars. And then, uh, let's see, we we'll also did some left wingers. I had to let go of Lekkanen and because he didn't want to play with us considering how bad we played last season. You know what, Timoshev's up to 81. You know what, we'll get him. Two years, even though he was just with us like a couple years ago. See if he wants to come back again. Two years at $4 million. And I think... Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to make much moves in re-signing, but whatever. Okay, so let's sim to next season, see if we get those guys. And then if not, we're going to have to probably sign some other guys. So Hartman has accepted, Saros has accepted, Nielsen's accepted, and Timoshev has rejected. Because he wants to win soon. Same with Saros, Yelvi. Ugh. You know what, actually I'm just going to leave it this way, I think. If we have to make some moves at the uh, at start of the next season, I will do that. So let's just leave it for now. We might be able to pick up some guys still at the start of the next season on free agency. So I'm going to sum up to next season, and I'll see you guys up here in a second. Okay, guys, so we're up here at the start of the season. Let's edit the lines quickly. Yeah, I probably should have signed more players, but whatever. I don't mind not being able to. So, yeah, we have nobody in the minors that could play in the NHL. Um, okay, so, Corson actually grew to an 86, nice. Okay, so Patan, 79, I don't mind if some of these guys are in the wrong spots. Lindstrom still listed as a fourth liner. Gonchar's up here on the third line, but he's got good shooting categories, so you know what, I think I just might leave him in the NHL. And Schultz is up to an 82, and he's a second line forward now. You know what, we could put Kuhn in there on the wing instead. Yeah, Bear Schultz has grown, which is great. Who has better face-offs? Anybody get good face-offs here on this line? Kilger's got the best face-offs out of them, but actually, Sure, I'm going to move you up. Fitzgerald is in the lineup. Still, this is a minor scoring forward. You know, we might let him play like a couple games this season, and if he does not play that good, I'll send him back to juniors. Because I don't want to stunt his growth. Obviously, being a medium elite player. Um, let's see. You know what? That works. Okay. Defensively, Ruchin's grown up to an 84 now. Nice. Hodges, this is a top four defenseman playing with Knubel, who's up to an 82. 
Getting some good growth. And Schrader, 75. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to sign some people. Yeah, we're going to definitely have to sign a defenseman. And then, let's see. I don't know if I want some of these guys playing, though. Hmm. Okay, let's go back for a second. Let's see just what's available. This episode might be a bit long. I don't know for sure because of the cuts and stuff like that, but it might be a bit long. So let's see what's available for free agents that could help us out on the bottom lines. We definitely need like some more defensemen. So Mart Merenson, you could get a contract. I don't care how much we're giving you really one year at $2 million. I don't know if he's going to want to sign with us, but you never know. Uh, Jaskin's back there again. Um, you need maybe another defenseman as well. Uh, let's see. Depth forward, but uh, he would be playing on our fourth line. Hmm. We definitely need somebody. I don't know. No, actually, I think that might be good almost. Because what did we need again, necessarily? Or what did I say necessarily for? Uh, what do we need? I think just a defenseman, mostly. Because I think I'm going to might leave Fitzgerald up here for a bit. But if we we might need a Ford. Yeah, we need a Ford. At least, for sure. Yeah. We definitely just need a Ford, pretty much. Hmm. Okay, so let's see. We need at least one Ford as well, and then we will pretty much end this episode soon. I'm sorry about the um, boringness right now of the episode, probably. Um, What should we get for Fords? Let's just get Joachim Nordstrom. He wants a two-way deal, but we'll just give him... Or two-way deal, but we'll just give him that. Jaskin wants way too much. I don't want Jaskin. And Zach Stanford, you know what, let's just give Nordstrom the contract only. And then let's advance a couple days and see if we can get those guys. And then I'm going to edit the lines and I'll show you guys what they look like afterwards. So, let's advance. Should be signing soon. I think they usually sign around this time. And they don't. One more day. And Nordstrom's accepted. And Marinchen has accepted. So I'm going to edit the lines again, guys, quickly. And see you guys in a second. Okay, guys. So I had this in actually a couple preseason games to get some other player. Because we were below the salary cap. And I couldn't send down uh, Gonchar. Because I decided to send down Gonchar. So our lines look like this. Not going to go through them. Because this video is running really long, I think. Defense looks like this, so Schrader's going to actually play in the NHL this year, giving him a chance. And our goaltending looks like that. And then HL, we're going to give Kessel the starting role down there, pretty much, or backup role, I don't know, one of the two. And then also, prospect-wise, let's see, who else? Anybody needs to be dressed. Malone needs to be dressed. Gonchar needs to be dressed again. And Baran needs to be dressed. Yeah, we got a lot of four prospects down here in the minors, but oh well. Griffin, I don't think he's going to pan out, so Baran goes there. Defensively, Seabrook's now in the AHL as well, so another one of our good picks is hopefully going to be growing. And then we got some forwards playing defense again. I guess we don't have enough defensemen. Or wait a second, actually we have Chisholm too. There you go. So yeah, that's what our lines look like in the AHL and NHL. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Minnesota Wild Gym Mode. So in next episode, we're going to get the season started. Get the rest of this preseason out of the way and that sort of stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time.